My position, so I lead the video replication and distribution team at Twitch. So uh, actually writing code is, is this, this highly creative process, I find. Uh, and it's very satisfying to go back and look at something you've written and read it and just be able to understand it because the way that you ended up structuring it just flows like a novel. You know, saying that something's creative doesn't mean that it's not hard at the same time. Doing that well is a skill that takes years and years and years of time to develop. And I, I certainly would not claim that I'm the best at Twitch at that or the best anywhere at that. Like, it, it's very, it's challenging. It's continuously challenging to improve and get better, which is another great thing about uh, writing code and doing software engineering is it's never boring because you're always improving. If you want to improve, it's something that you can limitlessly improve at pretty much without bounds. Yeah, it's great because you can start the day and have nothing and you can end the day with something that's like working and in production. Most of the, the super exciting and intense days in my job involve emergencies, <laughs> right? So, uh, you know, on a daily basis, uh, Twitch can have four, five million unique users coming to the site. Um, so we, can, we have a, a very large amount of traffic and during peak, you know, we have well over 600,000 concurrents on the site. So 600,000 people watching video simultaneously. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a sizable load. Um, you know, we generate the fourth most internet traffic in North America now. So we're only behind Netflix, uh, Google, and Apple are the only companies who produce more internet traffic than us in North America. Uh, so what that basically means is that you have to have systems that really scale, and when something goes wrong, it can go fairly catastrophic uh, if someone isn't on call and ready to deal with a problem as it starts. So some of the more memorable days are when things went catastrophically wrong and we, we saved it without users even noticing that something went catastrophically wrong. That's really when your systems are working well. There's been a, a large amount of thought put into the curriculum at Uzi. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's different than other universities uh, for a reason. Uh, it's different because many universities tend to approach programming very much like a, a technology rather than something that's based in, in theory. And one of the things I really like about Uzi's curriculum is that it puts a lot of the theory curriculum first, but it doesn't dwell on it like say German universities that tend to dwell on the theoretical side of things for two or three years before really getting to the practical. And so it's that interweaving of the theoretical, making sure that the theoretical is, is taken seriously by students, because it is seriously, like what? It is serious. Uh, once you get in to, you know, if you leave the university and you're actually working in a company, it's amazing how often probability comes up how often basic theoretical computer science comes up in terms of, is this a problem that we can even solve? Does it make sense for us to try to solve this problem? Or do we need to elude this problem and solve a different problem that's actually tractable? Like that comes up all the time. And in the hiring process, so I do a lot of hiring now. I interview four or five people a week some weeks, phone interviews, on-site interviews, etc. cetera. Um, and it's not that we directly probe theory, but the coding questions we ask often have theory embedded in them. And we're looking for an understanding of that theory, even if it's not explicitly stated when we pose the problems. It's very easy to find time to talk with the professors, to sit down and have an hour long conversation about a paper that you've read, about an idea that you had on, on your research, uh, it's just, it's extremely easy to, to socialize and get to know everyone in the department and in fact at the university in general. Uh, so that, that was very special and I mean it's interesting, I, I live in the United States now, but I would say 
about half of the people that I stay in touch with on a regular basis are people I met at Uzi during my time there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I now feel very split as a person between living in the US and living in, in Switzerland where I spent half of my 20s, more than half of my 20s.